Sorry, I was still muted. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our latest presentation, Getting to Know the State Library of Florida, Part 2. We'll be talking today about some of the neat things that make the State Library of Florida a unique and valuable resource for state employees, scholars, citizen researchers, librarians, and anyone else interested in Florida. So if you attended our first session, you know that I am Josie schrader Malafato, and I work as the library's electronic resources and outreach librarian. This means I help maintain our catalog and databases, create content for our website, and also do some of our marketing and training, such as these webinars and our newsletter. I also spend a couple hours of a day answering questions from people like you on our reference desk by phone and by email. So today we will be discussing uh, the role of the State Library in preserving Florida history and making it available to the public from our Florida Special Collection, one of the largest Florida historical cultural collections in the world, to our extensive collection of state publications. There is so much to see and learn about Florida from the State Library. So as I mentioned in part one, we didn't really have an organized state library until the 1920s, but parts of the collection do go back much further. For example, we have every edition of the Laws of Florida going back to 1822, and that was the first meeting of the legislature after Florida Territory became part of the United States, a full 23 years before statehood. Some of the other items in our Florida collection go back even further into Spanish and British colonial periods. So what you see on the slide here is the actually the 1845 law that organized the books owned by the new state government into a state library. And this is the 1925 law that established the state library's modern form led by a state librarian. Um, the libraries had to move several times. We've gone through several more administrative changes since we were founded. But as our collection has grown, we have remained committed to doing our very best to preserve this state's multifaceted history. And that is because it is one of our two missions. Today, we're focusing on our mission to collect Florida's published history and to preserve it and make it available for researchers and the public. If you attended part one, you know we also serve as the information provider to Florida state government agencies, including the Florida legislature. If you missed it and would like to learn about that more, please watch the recording of part one, which is available on our YouTube channel, and I will uh, include a link in the follow-up email. So now let's take a look at each of our main collections. I'll introduce each and then take you on a deeper dive into them. The Florida Special Collection is one of the largest collections of published material from and about Florida in the world, with more than 60,000 items spanning five centuries since European contact. Unlike some of our other materials, but like the State Archives files, the Florida Collection is limited to on-site use because many of the items in it are rare and irreplaceable. It also includes a lot more types of material than you might expect. Aside from books and magazines, we have maps, many of them more than 100 years old, local government planning documents, city directories spanning nearly a century. We also have more than 20,000 rolls of microfilm newspapers, including full runs of major Florida papers, such as the St. Petersburg Tampa Bay Times and the Florida Times Union. Lastly, a huge part of the collections are odds and ends that we in the library world call ephemera, tourism brochures from across the state, campaign mailers and other political ads going back to the 19th century, all sorts of posters and flyers from public health alerts to business announcements. Let's take a look at this collection in the catalog. So you can get to the catalog at library.florida.gov and then to get to the Florida Collection Portal, scroll down to the collection section and click on where it says Florida Special Collection. So even though the collection is non-circulating, we have lots of online resources to guide you in researching with it. 
that you can access from your office or from your home. Let's take a look at a couple of these. From this page, the catalog defaults to only searching the Florida collection, and we have some preset searches here. We also have a number of works scanned on the Internet Archive, as well as guides to help you pick out what you need. So let's click on New Florida Books to get an idea of what sort of works are in our collection. As you can see, these are items that are largely works of published history. And in many cases, these secondary sources were written with research assistance from our librarians and archivists. We also have some Florida themed fiction titles available, uh, as those are also an important part of the culture of the state. Now let's take a look at our history, culture, and heritage bibliographies. These are resources developed by our Florida collection librarian that provide overviews to different historical and cultural topics. Some of these are among the most popular resources on our entire website. Each one lists books and other resources, including many found online, that provide in-depth information on that topic, drawn from our collections, those of the state archives, and more. So for example, you can take a look at some, it's currently Black History Month, so we have an African-American history guide. And, but they can get pretty particular. So we've got things like architecture, different music genres, different historical periods, et cetera. Let's take a look at air and space history. So this divides it into aviation and space exploration and includes a wide variety of resources on those topics. As I mentioned, we have our own collection on the Internet Archive. You can get to that page from by here by clicking on historical books and documents online. You can also go to archive.org slash details slash State Library at Archives of Florida. So let's sort this by uh, the archived to see what has been added most recently. And this provides an easy access to collection of historical state publications, public domain ebooks, and more that we have scanned and put online. I'll discuss our state publications more in a little while. So as you can see here, those are mixed in with some historical church minutes, some books from the 1910s that we've scanned. But one of our big projects recently has been scanning the uh, publication, uh, the magazine Florida Wildlife, that was published by the uh, um, Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission and its predecessor agencies. Now let's go back to the slide. So I'm sure some of you are familiar with Florida Memory, which is the Division of Library and Information Services public history site. Florida Memory is run by a special team within the state archives, but it is a joint project of both the state archives and the state library and features digitized items and historical information from both of our collections. And as you might expect, the majority of library materials on Florida Memory come out of the Florida collection and primarily include four types of items, political, tourism based, Great Depression era WPA records, and most of all maps. While Florida Memory has only a small fraction of our maps online, they provide much higher resolution zoomable scans that allow you to look at them in close detail right from our computer. If you follow us or the state archives on social media, you may be familiar with our Map Mondays posts showcasing items from this collection. Now let's take a quick look at these online. So this is Florida Memory. Let's to start with, let's look at maps. I'm going to browse by image. And you can see 
We have a wide variety of types of maps from ca uh, county maps, maps of the whole state to specific locales, geographic features, to bird's eye views, and you can browse all of these online. We also have many more that aren't online, but and those you can go, you can still search in our catalog and uh, pull up from the Florida Special Collection page. We can also look uh, here on Florida Memory at under, here's how to get to it, historical records, selected documents. So this is the section of Florida Memory that has the most other materials besides maps from the State Library. And we're gonna take a look at two collections under Browse by Media, that is two different types of items, broadsides and brochures. So broadsides, brochures. Broadsides are things like posters, notices, and things like that, that uh, single page ads. We collect these and preserve them as they provide historical information about events. Uh, so one of our most popular social media posts actually was this flyer from uh, the visit from Richard Nixon to Tallahassee in 1970. Also here are some brochures. In print, we have these sorted into what are called vertical files, file folders organized by location. So here's an example that's color, a colorful example from the 1933 World's Fair. It's got four pages and you can get a good look at it here. On Florida Memory. And while these may seem disposable, they document cultural events. And we have hundreds, if not thousands, of brochures in our ephemera collection. So that's a peek at the Florida collection. And now let's go back to the slides. The other biggest and most unique part of our collection is our state publications. We touched on these a bit in part one. These are documents and other media produced by the state government for such purposes as public outreach, official reporting, etc. This is distinct from the public records created as a part of internal day-to-day -day business, which are either held in the state archives or more often by agencies themselves. Our items in this collection, as mentioned, go back to the acts of the territorial legislature in the 1820s, right after the US took control of Florida from Spain, all the way forward to, in some cases, this very week. Once again, the purpose of our state publications program is to preserve and maintain access to these publications, in some cases long after the agency that created them no longer exists, which is the reason why there is a requirement in the Florida statutes and in the administrative code that all state agencies provide the library with copies of anything they publish, although the number of copies depends on the total number produced. This also means that agencies themselves don't have to worry about storing extras. You can just send any copies our way and we'll distribute them across the state. This also applies to born digital e-docs. We go out and download these from state websites and also have a special tool to enable agencies to upload very large files to us. We then put those documents on a backup archive server so they can stay online through numerous website changes. And if your agency wants to link us, you can even save yourself the bandwidth and server space. If you have any questions about this program, please contact our state publications librarian, Laura Boss, at statepublications at dos.myflorida.com. So let's go live to the catalog again. 
and take a look at state publications. So So this is the state publications page in the catalog. By default, searching from this page will only return results from that collection. We also have another page on our main website that has more information about the collection. And uh, so from here, you have access uh, to information about it, FAQs, our collection policy, our handbook for depository libraries, and I'll talk about those in a bit more later, and more. And we can also look at the state publications uploader that I mentioned earlier, and I can show you how to contribute to the collection. So I'm going to click on submit your publication. And that takes us to the uploader and I'm going to log in. Your first step, though, if you don't have an account with us already, is to click request an account. Fill out the application form and we'll get back to you within three business days and then you can log in and upload publications. Um, you may still see an error on the first day after your account is created because the uploader updates at midnight, but after that it will work. So I'm going to log in. And here you can see the last five publications you uploaded, which for me were mostly things that I found on the Department of Transportation website that I noticed we didn't have copies of. But this time I've picked out an older, older publication to upload, which I have just scanned. So I'll go to Upload Files and click Select Files to pick my file. Just going to open this really quick to make sure it's the right file. Okay, it is. So this is the bulletin from the FSU Library School from 1950. So that's what I'm going to be uploading. Enter the title here. And click upload this file. As you can see, it's uploading. Once it's done, it shows you a file uploaded confirmation message. And uh, if you'd like to see this demo again without going through the whole webinar, we have a tutorial video up on our YouTube channel that just shows you how to use this uploader. And with that, let's go back to the slides. So when I said earlier that we'll distribute your publications across the state, I'm referring to the State Publications Depository Program. This is a network of libraries across the state that makes state publications available in person to patrons in that area. Currently, we have 22 member libraries all over the peninsula and panhandle. The purpose of the depository network is to ensure that government information is accessible regardless of where you are in the state. And as I mentioned when we were discussing our Internet Archive collection, another way we're working on making Florida history and heritage available is by digitizing materials. We've been retroactively scanning many of our print state publications, including the entire laws of Florida, as well as a number of public domain items, such as antique books from the Florida collection. This serves a dual purpose. It makes them available online for free, anywhere and anytime, which saves both you and us a lot of effort. It also means that once it's scanned, we rarely have to handle the often very old and fragile original copies. We are also a selective federal depository, so that means we have a lot of documents from the federal government as well. These can be as heady and dry as a congressional, trans a congressional transcript 
or as fun as a NASA-produced jigsaw puzzle of the moon. But we mostly focus on collecting the federal documents that are of direct importance to Florida, dealing with issues such as public health, the environment, immigration, things that are affect our jobs and lives every day. And last, but very, very far from least, we have our circulating collection. These are the books you can check out from the State Library, just like any other library. While we focus on acquiring new books to serve the needs of state agency employees specifically, anyone can apply for a library card and borrow books from our collection. Until recently, members of the public needed to visit us in Tallahassee to get a card and borrow books, as our remote services such as databases and book delivery are for state employees only. Unfortunately, the RA Gray Building is closed to visitors at the moment, but we are currently providing curbside pickup as well. So if you're in Tallahassee and you'd like to swing on by, we'll bring the books to you in front of the RA Gray with proper safety precautions taken. We're also currently working on, on setting up a way for the public to register for library cards online. Also, we take suggestions. So on our new book section on, in our catalog and the services for state employees page that we went over on Wednesday, there's a link to a suggest an item form. If we don't have something you think we should, please let us know. So, so this is our suggest an item form. And this is where and how you can reach us. You can reach us at any of these phone numbers, or if you'd rather, you can reach us by email. If you have any questions about our collections, state government, or anything else, we'll be happy to help you to the best of our abilities. Do you have any questions? And as a reminder, if you have a microphone, you can hit that hand raise button and we are happy to unmute you or you can put any questions into the chat. I'm not seeing anything in the chat or anybody's hand up. All right. Well, then I think we have given everybody about 30 minutes back in their day. Thank you everybody for joining us this morning and have a good weekend.